Welcome to this video on fiber optic communication ray theory. In this session, we will be looking into the basic nature of light, the various theories that describe light, ray theory, wave theory and quantum theory and the basic ray optics. I am Dr. M. Sumati, Professor of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Light has been studied over centuries and various theories and models proposed at different periods of time. We know light exhibits dual nature that of wave and that of a particle. The wave nature of light can be explained using Young's double slit experiment where interference and superposition produce alternate dark and light bands. And the particle nature of light can be shown using Einstein's photoelectric effect where light incident on a material ejects electrons. The models of light description are geometric optics or ray theory, wave theory or mode theory and quantum theory. Ray theory makes use of light rays to explain the phenomena of reflection and refraction, but fail to explain interference and diffraction which were detailed by wave theory. Ray theory developed over the years can be modeled using wave theory and quantum theory explains the phenomena of emission and absorption of light. Considering geometric optics or ray theory, here light is considered to be rays and light rays give the direction of propagation of flow of energy. Light ray travels in a straight line in a homogeneous medium and at interfaces gets reflected and refracted. The angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence and the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence when light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium whereas as shown in the picture whereas when light travels from a denser to a rarer medium the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence the incident ray reflected ray and refracted ray lie along the same plane so ray theory could explain phenomena of reflection and refraction but the alternate dark and light bands that are produced in young's double slit experiment could not be explained using reflection and refraction of ray theory Therefore, wave theory was proposed. Wave motion and wave runs was described in detail by Huygens and later on supported by Fresnel. So, here light is considered to be a wave motion and Maxwell suggested that these waves are electromagnetic in nature that is they are made of electric and magnetic fields and they are transverse that is the electric and magnetic fields are in a direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light wave. So, wave theory could explain the phenomena of interference and diffraction. But neither the wave theory nor the uh, ray theory explain black body radiation that is emission of light spectrum from a hot body. So, quantum theory was used to explain this. Quantum theory considers light to be packets or discrete units of energy called photons and quantum theory explains the interaction between material and photons. When a photon is incident on an atom, the energy from the photon is transferred to an electron and the electron gets excited to a higher energy level. Similarly, when an, an electron from a higher energy level drops to a lower level, then it emits photons of frequency nu governed by the expression E is equal to h nu where E is the energy of the photon and H is Planck's constants and nu the frequency of the photon. So, quantum theory could explain emission and absorption of light by materials. Considering the relationship between light ray and wave, the electromagnetic waves uh, produced by an optical source can be represented using spherical wave runs. Wave runs are nothing but locus of points having the same phase in a wave train. So, when the wavelength of light is very small compared to the obstacle or opening that it encounters, these waves, spherical waves appear as straight lines to the opening or the obstacle and they can be represented by plane wave fronts and to each plane wave front a ray can be associated in a di perpendicular direction and give this gives the direction of propagation of the wave front. Therefore, light rays give the direction of propagation of the wave and when the wavelength of light is very small compared to the obstacle then these waves can be considered as 
plane wave fronts. Looking into some of the basic laws of ray theory, first we will look into the definition of refractive index. Refractive index of a medium is the ratio of velocity of light in free space or air to velocity of light in medium. The velocity of light in any medium decreases as the density of the medium increases. So, velocity of light in a medium is lesser than that in free space. So, numerator is greater than denominator and the refractive index value is equal to 1 for free space and greater than 1 for other type of materials. We look into total internal reflection, what we have seen in the earlier uh, video in detail, I shall briefly let, tell over here. When light travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium and makes an angle of incidence theta greater than or equal to the critical angle at the interface, then light is totally internally reflected and there is no refraction. This is called total internal reflection. Considering two media of refractive index N1 and N2, angle, angle of incidence theta 1 and angle of refraction theta 2, according to Snell's law, N1 sin theta 1 is equal to N2 sin theta 2. Now, considering a ray making an angle, critical angle as indicated by the red color ray, the angle of refraction is 90 degree. So, substituting these values, N1 sin theta c is N2 sin 90 degree. So, sin 90 is 1. So, sin theta c is N2 by N1 and the critical angle theta c is sin inverse of N2 by N1. Considering light propagation in optical fiber, which is cylindrical in nature, there are two kind of rays, meridional rays and skew rays. Meridional rays pass through the axis of the fiber after every reflection and they lie in the single plane and the energy is concentrated to the center. A skew ray does not lie in a single plane, it follows a helical path and the energy is concentrated towards the outer boundary. Therefore, energy leaks into the cladding in a skew ray and as the ray propagates, mode coupling happens and there is energy loss. The main rays that propagate in an optical fiber are meridional rays. Moving to the next concept, acceptance angle. We know that in a fiber, light propagates by the principle of total internal reflection when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. So, considering the core to have a refractive index N1 greater than that of the cladding N2. Now, light is coupled into an optical fiber. When light is coupled into an optical fiber, the light rays at the core surface. So, the air core interface, the light has to make an angle theta naught called the acceptance angle with respect to the axis of the fiber, so that it gets propagated by total internal reflection within the fiber. That is for light to propagate by total internal reflection inside a fiber, it has to make an angle uh, less than theta naught, the acceptance angle at the core surface, so that it makes an angle greater than critical angle at the core cladding interface inside the fiber. If the angle of incidence at the core surface is greater than theta naught, that is acceptance angle as indicated by the red ray, then the ray gets refracted into the cladding. And this acceptance angle Looking into it in a 360 degree, we have the acceptance cone. Numerical aperture of a fiber is the light collecting ability of the fiber. The figure shows a fiber made of core and cladding with the refractive index N1 and N2 and the acceptance cone and a theta naught is the acceptance angle. So, when light falls at the core interface, core air interface at an angle less than theta naught it makes an angle greater than theta c at the cladding core interface inside the fiber and it propagates by total internal reflection. But if it makes an angle greater than theta naught at the air core interface as shown by the dotted line, then this ray is refracted into the cladding. So, now considering the air and the core, air has refractive index of n and the angle of incidence is theta naught and the core refractive index is N1, angle of refraction is theta. Applying Snell's law here, N sin theta naught is N1 sin theta and considering this triangle, 
sin theta is equal to cos phi, so replacing the value. And we know by trigonometry that sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. So, substituting that value for cos phi here and phi is the critical angle and according to Snell's law and total internal reflection what we have seen in the previous slide, sin theta c is n2 by n1. So, substituting that value again, we have n1 into 1 minus n2 by n1 the whole square the whole power half that is the numerical aperture. So, new and reducing and simplifying the expression, we get that is equal to n 1 square minus n 2 square to the power half. So, numerical aperture is equal to n sin theta naught, where n is a refractive index of air and is equal to 1. So, that is equal to sin theta naught that is equal to square root of n 1 square minus n 2 square. The relative refractive index difference delta is given by n 1 square minus n 2 square by 2 n 1 square. Rearranging the expression and taking square roots on both sides, we get numerical aperture is equal to n 1 into square root of 2 delta. And for weakly guided waves where n 1 is approximately equal to n 2, delta is equal to or approximately equal to n 1 minus n 2 by n 1. So, in this video, we have seen the basic nature of light, the various theories to describe light that is ray theory, wave theory and quantum theory and finally, the basic laws of ray theory. These are the references. Thank you.